it's time to get all cozied up because we are going to be watching A Few Good Men. And this is one with Jack Nicholson and with Tom Cruise. I am very excited for this. This is actually the Patreon poll winner. Uh, I will do Patreon polls every single month where you guys choose the three movies that I will be watching throughout a month. And if you're not on Patreon and you're considering it, you can be part of the polls even with the lowest tier. So for now, we are here with a few good men. I am very excited for it. I have no idea what it's going to be about. So I think we're just going to dive into it. You know where to find my full reaction over on the same website. My social media, they're linked down below. Oh, what is happening? Well, he's having a rough nine. And then we come into this where she's just very happy. <laughs> that was so satisfying to watch. Whoa. Ooh, there she is. No, I'd like to request that it be I who am assigned. That's confidence inspiring. Captain, I'd like to request that I be the attorney Hi, I'm Lieutenant Commander Galloway. I'm here to see Captain West. Oh, go right in, Commander. They're expecting you. Oh, I love Demi Moore. Would you like to sit down? Uh, I'm fine, sir. Have a seat. Okay. Two Marines, a Lance Corporal Harold Dawson and a Private Loudon Downey, entered the barracks room of a PFC William Santiago and assaulted him. Santiago died at the base hospital approximately an hour later. He died? Dawson and Downey are both recruiting poster Marines. And Santiago was known to be a screw-up. I was thinking it sounded an awful lot like a code red. Christ. Sir, I'd like to have them moved up to Washington and assigned counsel. And I'd like to suggest that I be the one who that uh, who is assigned to represent them. Commander Galloway, why don't you get yourself a cup of coffee? Thank you, sir. I'm fine. Commander, I'd like you to leave the room so we can talk about you behind your back. Oh. Well, at least he's honest. <laughs> we better find out before the rest of the world does. Every case in two years, who's she handling? Rosenberg? She's not cut out. Hell of an investigator, Jerry. And I think internal affairs, sure. She can crawl up a lawyer's ass with the best of them. Assigned in council. Not me. Well, from what I understand from your colleagues, you're much too valuable in your. Sir, I think there might be more involved than that. Don't worry about it. I promise you, division will sign the right man for the job. Oh. Well, let's get to. Oh, there he is. We were supposed to meet in your office 15 minutes ago to talk about the McDermott case. You're stalling on this thing. Now, we either get it done, and I mean now, or no kidding, Caffey. I'm going to hang your boy from a yard arm. He's angry. Sherby, does the Navy still hang people from yard arms? I don't think so. Dave Sherby doesn't think the Navy hangs people from yard arms. Oh my God. It was oregano, Dave. It was ten dollars worth of oregano. Yeah, well, your client thought it was marijuana. My client's a moron. That's not against the law. <laughs> You're gonna spend the next three months going blind on paperwork because a signalman second class bought and smoked a dime bag of oregano. I don't know why I'm agreeing to this. You have wisdom beyond your years. <laughs> I really started to enjoy watching Tom Cruise movies. This first one's for you. You're moving up in the world, requested by division. Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. A Marine corporal named Dawson illegally fires a round from his weapon over the fence line and into Cuban territory. Hmm. A big wall separating the good guys from the bad guys. Oh. Go into Santiago's room, tie him up, stuff a rag down his throat, and an hour later, Santiago's dead. Physician says the rag was treated with some kind of toxin. Poison the rag? <laughs> Meantime, go and see Lieutenant Commander Joanne Galloway with Internal Affairs. Uh, the flight to Cuba, was that 0600 in the morning, sir? So I got a stack of papers on my desk about a mile Work high. with Kathy on this. Doing various administrative things. Backup. Whatever. In other words, I have no responsibilities here whatsoever. <laughs> Daniel Kathy, I was told to meet with uh, Lieutenant Commander Galloway. Is that a briefing? I'll call you back. You're the attorney division assigned? I'm lead counsel to Sam Weinberg. I have no responsibilities here whatsoever. <laughs> oh, this is going to be a great movie. How long have you been in the Navy? Going on nine months now. And how long have you been out of law school? 
A little over a year. Have I done something wrong? No, it's that when I petitioned division to have counsel assigned, I was hoping I would be taken seriously. No offense taken, in case you were wondering. Have you ever been in a courtroom? If this thing goes to court, they won't need a lawyer. They'll need a priest. No, they'll need a lawyer. Dawson's family's been contacted. Downey's closest living relative is Jetty Miller, his aunt on his mother's side. One of the people you'll be seeing down there is the barracks CEO, Colonel Nathan Jessup. I assume you've heard of him. Who hasn't? He's been in the papers. <laughs> that is so difficult. He wanted to be transferred off the base. No one was listening. Are you with me? Yeah. I don't think he is. He's spacing out. Lieutenant, this letter makes it look like your client had a motive to kill Santiago. And Santiago is who? I'll get them to drop the conspiracy and conduct unbecoming. 12 years. You haven't talked to a witness or looked at a piece of paper. Pretty impressive, huh? Wow. <laughs> my job is to make sure that you do your job. I'm special counsel for internal affairs, so my jurisdiction's pretty much in your face. Read the letter. I'll expect a report when you return from Cuba. Oh, boy. He's a little preoccupied. Team's playing Bethesda Medical Night. Tell your friend not to get cute down there. The Marines in Guantanamo are fanatical. About what? About being Marines. Oh. Okay. I'm a Marine stationed at Marine Barracks. I'm writing to inform you of my problems with my unit here in Cuba and to ask for your help. I've fallen out on runs before for several reasons, such as feeling dizzy or nauseated. My sergeant grabbed me and pushed me down the hill, like, and the last thing I remember is hitting the deck. I ask you to help me. Please, sir, I just need to be transferred out of RSC. Sincerely, PFC William T. Santiago. Poor Santiago. I'm willing to provide you information, information about, about legal fence line shooting that occurred the night of August the 2nd. Oh. Is PFC William T. Santiago. Why is everyone so rude? Uh? Well, apparently he's not very happy down here at Shangri-La. He's written letters to everybody but Santa Claus asking for a transfer. Yeah. About a fence line shooting. Matthew? I'm... I'm a pole, sir. Oh, Nicholson. He's a U.S. Marine, and it would appear he can't run from here to there without collapsing from heat exhaustion. What is going on in Bravo Company, Matthew? Colonel, I think perhaps it would be better to hold this discussion in private. Why? The same way you handled the Curtis Bell incident. Sir, your methods doing... of leadership. Don't interrupt me, Lieutenant. I'm still your superior officer. And I'm yours, Matthew. Ooh. Wait, I've got a better idea. Let's transfer the whole Windward Division off the base. Get me the president on the phone. We're surrendering our position in Cuba. And now I'm thinking, Colonel Morganson, that your suggestion transferring Santiago, while expeditious and certainly painless, might not be in a manner of speaking the American way. Okay, officer. Santiago doesn't make 4646 on his next proficiency in conduct report, and I'm going to blame you. Ooh. And I'm going to kill you. Oh! Yes, sir. So everything is on your shoulders? Uh, and your life is on the line. No pressure. We're in the business of saving lives, Matthew. That is a responsibility that we have to take pretty seriously. And I believe that taking a Marine who is not quite up to the job and shipping him off to another assignment puts lives in danger. We go back a while into the academy together. We were commissioned together. We did our tours in Vietnam together. But I've been promoted up through the chain with greater speed and success than you have. If that's a source of tension, embarrassment for you, I don't give a shit. Don't ever question my orders in front of another officer. I think it fits very well to his role. I wanted to talk to you about Corporal Dawson and Private Downey. Those names sound like they should mean something to me, but I'm... Dawson, Downey, your clients. The Cuba thing, yeah, so Dawson and Downey. Oh my. I was just wondering why two guys have been locked up since this morning while their lawyer's outside hitting a ball. We need to practice. That wasn't funny. It was a little funny. <laughs> but I don't think you're fit to handle the defense. Ordinarily, it takes someone hours to discover I'm not fit to handle the defense. Oh, come on. That was damn funny. Oh, my. <laughs> you went to Harvard Law, then you joined the Navy. Probably because that's what your father wanted you to do. Kind of laying low so you can get out and get a real job. If that's the situation, that's fine. I won't tell anyone. 
And I wouldn't be doing my job if I allowed Dawson and Downey to spend any more time in prison than absolutely necessary because their attorney had predetermined the path of least resistance. Wow. I'm impressed too. I'm sexually aroused, Command. I don't That's what not what I meant with it. I'm impressed. I'm gonna talk to your supervisor. Okay. Go straight up Pennsylvania Avenue. It's the big white house with the pillars in it. I was assigned by division, remember? Somebody over there thinks I'm a pretty good lawyer, so I think I can handle things myself. What a pity. Oh my. This is gonna get so chaotic. I'm Daniel Caffey. This is Sam Weinberg. Sit down. Is this your signature? Yes, sir. You don't have to call me, sir. Is this your signature? Sir, yes, sir. Sir, you don't need to do it twice. <laughs> Sir, a Marine refuses to bathe on a regular basis. The men in his squad would give him a GI shower. What's that? Scrub brushes, Brillo pads, steel wool. Beautiful. <laughs> Diago Codron? Yes, sir. Oh. Does, uh, they ever talk? Sir, PFC Downey will answer any direct questions you ask him. Uh, Private Downey, the rag you stuffed in Santiago's mouth, was there poison on it? No, sir. We were just gonna shave his head, sir. Oh. Were you there when the ambulance got there? Yes, sir. That's when we were taken under arrest. Lambs Corporal, the night of August 2nd, did you fire a shot across the fence line into Cuba? Yes, sir. My mirror engaged, sir. Lambs Corporal's claiming that his mirror was about to fire at him. Hmm, uh, is that true, though? He went outside of his unit, sir. If he had a problem, he should have spoken to me, sir. Then a sergeant, then company commander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then... Uh, all right. Oh. Train him to think of his unit before himself, to respect the code. What's the code? Unit, core, God, country. Yeah, what do we do now? The government of the United States wants to charge you two with murder. And you want me to go to the prosecutor with unit, core, God, country? That's our code, sir. It's, it's your code. code. <laughs> Harold, I think there's a concept you better start warming up to. Sir? I'm the only friend you've got. That was kind of nice to hear, though. They plead guilty, we drop the conspiracy and the conduct on becoming 20 years, they're home and happy. They killed a Marine. The rag was tested for poison, the autopsy lab reports. They all say the same thing, maybe, maybe not. We off the record. I'm gonna give you the 12 years. Before you go getting yourself into trouble tomorrow, I think you should know. Toon Commander Lieutenant Jonathan Kendrick held a meeting with the men and specifically told them not to touch Santiago. And they still did. Commander, Listen, what I came to make peace got off on the wrong foot. Commander? You can call me Joanne. Joanne. Or Joe. Joe, if you ever speak to a client of mine again without my permission, I have you disbarred. Friends? Perfectly within my province. Does Aunt Jenny have a barn? We can hold the trial there. I can sew the costumes. Maybe his uncle... I knew that he was going to say something like this. Oh. I'm going to Cuba with you tomorrow. If you like it or not. Hits just keep on coming. Let's go, Luther. Another day, another dollar, Captain. <laughs> what goes around comes around. Can't beat him, join him. At least I got my hair. Well, you got everything. See you tomorrow, Luther. Now the best see you first. Aww, Luther is so cute. The girl sat here, pointed, and said, Pa. She did. It's pointing at a mailbox. That's right. Pointing as if to say, Pa, look. A mailbox. Yeah, sure. You don't believe their story. You think they ought to go to jail for the rest of their lives? I believe every word of their story, and I think they ought to go to jail for the rest of their lives. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Because that could be even more strict. This is Marines doing it to another Marine, right? I get sick when I fly because I'm afraid of crashing into a large mountain. I don't think Dramamine will help. I got some oregano. I heard that works pretty good. He said the platoon commander, Lieutenant Jonathan Kendrick, had a meeting with the men and specifically told them not to touch. Yeah, that's right. I never mentioned Kendrick. I don't even know who he is. I'll see you tomorrow. This movie is not anything that I expected it to be, but so far it's been interesting and funny. So far I've been loving it. Is there a problem, sir? No, no problem. I'm just not that crazy about boats, that's all. Jesus Christ, Kathy, you're in the Navy for crying out loud. <laughs> Nobody likes her very much. <laughs> oh, wow. Is 
Okay, now we're in the wind ward, guys. Observing and evaluating, sir. Lieutenant Sam Weinberg. Sir? Yeah. This is my XO, Colonel Markinson, and platoon leader, Lieutenant Kendrick. I've asked them to join us. Sit down. Yeah, that's Kendrick. I'm Kathy, Colonel Markinson. The guy that said them that they should not be touching Santiago. Lionel Caffey said, well, we'll just see about that. How the hell is your dad, Danny? He passed away seven years ago, sir. Don't I feel like the asshole? Not at all, sir. Formality more than anything else. Jagcor insists that we interview all the relevant witnesses. Jagcor can be demanding that way. Him and his pens. I told the men that we had an informer among us and that despite any desire they might have to seek retribution, Private Santiago was not to be harmed in any way. What time is that meeting? 1600. It's four o'clock. I think he understood. <laughs> I think he understood that. Well, he's there to be moral support. Ain't that right? Was this his room? Sam, we should make sure somebody gets this to his parents. We don't need it anymore. Right. Lieutenant Kendrick, may I call you John? No, you may not. Oh. Lieutenant Kendrick, do you think Santiago was murdered? Private Santiago is dead, and that is a tragedy. But he is dead because he had no code. He is dead because he had no honor, and God was watching. Wow. How do you feel about that theory? Sounds good. Let's move on. Seems like sounds good. We agreed that for his own safety, Santiago should be transferred off the base. Santiago was set to be transferred. No, he was not. 0600 the next morning. Five hours too late, as it turned out. You guys were going to train him. The directive having come from the commander, I gave it its due attention. What is your point, Joe? She has no point. She often has no point, sir. It's part of her charm. We're out of here. Thank you. My point is that I think Code Red. He's stressing out, and he's doing it for some reason. You're the luckiest man in the world. There is nothing on this earth sexier than a woman that you have to salute in the morning. You haven't gotten a blowjob from a superior officer. Well, you're just letting the best in life pass you by. I need an answer to my question, sir. On the record, I tell you I discourage the practice in a court. You want to investigate me, roll the dice, and take your chances. So don't think for one second that you can come down here, flash a badge, and make me nervous. Yeah, let's go. Time to go. Colonel, I just need a copy of Santiago's transfer order. What's that? Santiago's transfer order. You guys have paperwork on that kind of thing. I, I just need it for the file. For the file? Yeah, you guys have it, don't you? She can have a copy of the transfer order for the file, Danny. I'm here to help in any way I can. Thank you. You believe that, don't you, Danny? That I'm here to help you in any way I can? At this point, I'm not sure. With your Harvard mouth, extend me some f courtesy. You gotta ask me nicely. Colonel Jessup, if it's not too much trouble, I'd like a copy of the transfer order. Sir. What is wrong with this dude? I understand very well why Santiago didn't want to be here. All of you guys are insane. I really missed you. I was just saying to myself, it's been almost three hours. Markinson's disappeared. What? I'll try to find him in the morning. I've already tried. Joanne, you're coming dangerously close to the textbook definition of interfering with a government investigation. I'm not even going over to her. Not him. She had Loudon sign the papers about an hour ago. I suppose it's way too much to hope that you're making this up just to buy. <laughs> Kendrick ordered a code red. Sir? You heard what I said. Did Lieutenant Kendrick order you guys to give Santiago a code red? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why the hell you never mentioned this before? You didn't ask us, sir. <laughs> oh, my. Yes, sir. I know you do, sir. Fuck you, Harold. All right. I want you to speak freely. And that's correct. Then he dismissed the platoon and we all went to our rooms. Lieutenant Kendrick came to our room, ma'am. About five minutes after the meeting broke, sir. <laughs> Lieutenant Kendrick ordered us to give Santiago a code red. Oh, boy. How long have you known about the order? I didn't. Who's this? It's Joe Galloway. She's Downey's lawyer. She's very pleased to meet you. <laughs> Kendrick, 
Kendrick specifically told those men not to touch Santiago. That's right. That's not what Kendrick said. Kendrick's lying. And I have 23 Marines who aren't accused of murdering a lieutenant with four letters of commendation. You don't think I could subpoena Markinson? You can try, but you won't find him. You know what Markinson did for the first 17 of his 26 years in the Corps? This is so chaotic already. No deal, we're going to court. No, you're not, because you'll lose. And Danny knows it. You're gonna be charged with a whole truckload. Murder, conspiracy, conduct, unbecoming. That's the end of this negotiation. I'll see you tomorrow morning at the arraignment. I feel like you need to trust Danny. The government's offering involuntary manslaughter for two years. You owe me six months. You're the greatest lawyer in the world. Ooh, how can we ever thank you? You're going home in six months. I'm afraid we can't do that, sir. Why? Go home? We did nothing wrong, sir. We did our job, and if that has consequences, then I'll accept them. We have a code, oh, sir. zippity doo da. Do what I'm telling you, you'll be home in six months. Do it, Harold. Six months. It's nothing. It's a hockey season. <laughs> what do we do then, sir? After six months, we'll be dishonorably discharged, right, sir? Probably. What do we do then, sir? Yeah, what are you gonna do? Now you're asking us to sign a piece of paper that says we have no honor. You're asking us to say we're not Marines. I believe I did my job, and I will not dishonor myself, my unit, or the Corps, or I can go home in six months! Sir. <laughs> oh, I understand this, though. Commander, I'd like to talk to Lance Corporal Dawson alone for a minute. Please? Sergeant. But all the blood that was coming out of his face and stuff. I want to know more about that. Because right now, I feel like that guy there in the room is a good guy. Danny worships you. He's gonna do whatever you do. Are you really gonna let this happen to him because of a code, Harold? Do you think we were right? I think you'd lose. You're such a coward. I'm not gonna feel responsible for this, Harold. I did everything I could. You're going to Leavenworth for the better part of your life, and you know, I don't give a shit. What happened to saluting an officer when he leaves the room? Oh. I want to get him a new lawyer. How do I do it? Just make a motion tomorrow morning at the arraignment. When you ask the judge for new counsel, Danny, be sure and ask nicely. What do you want from me? I want you to stand up and make an argument. Do you really think that's the same as two teenage Marines executing a routine order that never believe or result in harm? These guys aren't the Nazis. Don't look now, Danny, but you're making an argument. Why are you so afraid to be look. a lawyer? Were Daddy's expectations really that high? It doesn't matter what I believe. It only matters what I can prove. So please, don't tell me what I know and don't know I know the law. You know nothing about the law. You're an ambulance chaser with a rank. You're nothing. Go with that. What is happening? And you're gonna spend the better part of a year going blind on paperwork because a 90-year-old man misread the Delaware insurance code. So what happened? He calls back 15 minutes later, says, let's make a deal. Oh, Danny, what are you gonna do? He's not even here. Oh, there he is. All rise. W. Dawson and Private First Class Loudon down. The accuser charged with murder, conspiracy to commit murder, and conduct on becoming a United States Marine. Enter a plea of not guilty for the accused. We will adjourn until 10 hundred, three weeks from today, at which time this general court martial will. They want to keep their honor. <laughs> he believes that he did what was right. Following the code, right? We work out of my apartment every night, seven o'clock. Joe, before you come over and I pick up a carton of legal pads, half a dozen boxes of red pens, half a dozen boxes of black. I need all the proficiency and conduct reports on Dawson Downey and Santiago. There we go. So this is what a courtroom looks like. <laughs> you think Dawson and Downey knew it was an illegal order? No matter what they knew, any decent human being would have refused. They're not permitted to question orders. They work at a place where you have to wear camouflage or you might get shot. I've got medical reports and Chinese food. I say we eat first. He's like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Did you get any Kung Pao chicken? Oh, now I got hungry too. 
I believe that you guys are going to win this. I feel it. Joe, talk to doctors. Find out everything there is to know about lactic acidosis. Dr. Hill. Sam, I want you this to find out. This is Lieutenant Commander Galloway with the JAG in Thanks. Washington. Was there any sign of external damage? No. Where could it be? Whatever happens, you have to look like it's exactly what you knew was going to happen. You pass me documents, do it swiftly, swiftly and you don't, don't look, look over anxious. anxious. Then wear that perfume in court. It wrecks my concentration. Really? <laughs> I was talking to Sam. <laughs> Danny, I know what you're going to say. You know, we've had our differences. Certain respect for me over the last three weeks. Well, of course, I'm happy about that. You like me, I won't make you say it. I was just going to tell you to wear matching socks tomorrow. <laughs> oh. Better believe it. Could there possibly become some romance? You guys know I love a good romance. We're gonna get creamed. Oh. Well, if we lose, there might be romance. Be confident. You are gonna save our son, aren't you? I'll do my best. Danny, I'd like you to meet Jenny Miller, Loudon's aunt. Your aunt Jenny? Uh-huh. Wow. I was expecting someone older. So was I. Oh, okay. That was that conversation. They woke him up, tied his arms and legs with tape, and forced a rag into his throat. A few minutes later, a chemical reaction called lactic acidosis caused his lungs to begin bleeding. He was pronounced dead at 37 minutes past midnight. Now, Lieutenant Caffey is going to try and pull off a little magic act here. He's going to try a little misdirection. He's going to astonish you with stories of rituals and dazzle you with official sounding terms like code red. Okay, what about it? There was no poison on the rag and there was no intent to kill. And any attempt to prove otherwise is futile because it just ain't true. When Dawson and Downey went into Santiago's room that night, it wasn't because of vengeance or hatred. It wasn't because they were looking for tips on Saturday night. Because it was what they were ordered to do. Let me say that again. It's because it was what they were ordered to do. Now, out in the real world, that means nothing. And here at the Washington Navy Yard... It means the world. But if you're a Marine, and you're given an order, you follow it or you pack your bags. Make no mistake about it. Harold Dawson and Loudon Downey are sitting before you today because they did their job. That was no magic. That was facts as well. The shift reported only one sentry returned his weapon to the switch with a round of ammunition missing. He claims to have been engaged in some manner by the enemy. There was enough evidence to support such a charge. Thank you. No more questions. Witnesses excused. Tough crowd. Private Santiago betrayed a code we believe in very deeply, sir. Well, it was clear that he didn't want us taking matters into our own hands, sir. What was the order? Sir, he said Santiago wasn't to be touched. No, sir. Thanks. I have no more questions. The witness is excused. That was direct, short. He couldn't have known what was happening in the room. Three o'clock, Stone says he doesn't know what killed Santiago. Then he meets with Jessup, and at five o'clock he says it was poison? The doctor's not telling the truth. be able to use a liar liar pants on fire. To oh, this is going to be a long case. Did Willie Santiago die of poisoning? Absolutely. For a person to have an affliction, some sort of condition, which might also speed up the process of acidosis. It's possible. Oh, it is? Commander, if I had a coronary condition and the rag was accidentally pushed too far down, is it possible that my cells would continue burning sugar after the rag was taken out as to escape a physician during a routine medical exam? Yes. Shortness of breath? Yes. Fatigue? Of course. He had all of those. That's why he passed out. Commander, isn't it possible that Santiago had a serious coronary condition? It was that condition and not some mysterious poison that caused the accelerated chemical reaction. No. Because Lord knows if you put a man with a serious coronary condition on duty with a clean bill of health and that man died from a heart-related incident, you'd have a lot to answer for, wouldn't you, Doctor? I have no more questions, Your Honor. So this is actually the doctor's fault. That is so crazy. Was Willie Santiago poisoned? Yes. Thank you, sir. He's lying. Oh. It's a difference between paper law and trial law. Sam. Christ, you even had the judge saying Stone was an expert. Sam, she made a mistake. I'm not going to go call my wife. I'll uh, see you tonight. That's unlucky. They didn't like him, so they killed him. And why? Because he couldn't run very fast. What day is tomorrow? Saturday. Sorry, Sam. Ooh. Don't worry about the doctor. This trial starts Monday. One and two with two out. 
And a line drive to left. I don't have so much to comment on because I feel like we're just getting a lot of information and I don't really want to talk over it. So this is probably going to be very difficult for me to edit. <laughs> How you'd feel about my taking you to dinner tonight? Are you asking me out on a date? Sounded like you were asking me on a date. I wasn't. I've been asked out on dates before and that's what it sounded like. Do you like seafood? I know a good seafood place. <laughs> it's cute. My third case was a drunken disorderly. It lasted nine weeks. I rounded up 31 people. I was talking about the romance earlier, guys. Do you think it's happening? Yeah, well, after that, they moved me to internal affairs. Where I have earned two meritorious service medals and two letters of commendation. Damn. Because I want you to think I'm a good lawyer. Gain your respect. Have you ever received a code red? Yes, sir. Took turns punching me in the arm for five minutes. And then they poured glue on my hand. And it worked, too, because I ain't never dropped my weapon since. <laughs> he was like, I'm laughing. <laughs> you got a code red because your palms were sweaty. Why didn't Santiago, this burden to his unit, ever get one? Dawson wouldn't allow it, sir. Would you turn to the chapter that deals with code reds, please? <laughs> Would you turn to the page in this book that says where the mess hall is, please? Well, Lieutenant Caffey, that's not in the book, sir. How did you know where the mess hall was if it's not in this book? No more questions. <laughs> He's like, he's good. Oh, Kendrick, review. I want to slam dunk this guy. Oh, Kendrick, they're coming for you. <laughs> <gasps> oh, Jesus Christ! I know everything. Was it a code red? Yes, I know. Yeah, you know shit. He was never going to be transferred off that base. Yeah, we know that. I don't want a deal, and I don't want immunity. I want you to know that I'm proud neither of what I have done nor of what I am doing. Mm. If you accuse Kendrick or Jessup of any crime without proper evidence, you're going to be subject to a court martial for professional misconduct, and that's something that's going to be stapled to every job application you ever fill out. That is crazy that they're like helping each other when they're like against each other in the cases. I'm your friend and I'm telling you, I don't think your clients belong in jail, but I don't get to make that decision. You got bullied into that courtroom, Danny. You got bullied into that courtroom by the memory of a dead lawyer. Wow. You're a lousy softball player, Jack! The boys are going down, Danny. I can't stop it anymore. Lieutenant, these are the last three pro-con reports you signed for Lance Corporal Dawson. I have two books at my bedside, Lieutenant. The Marine Corps Code of Conduct and the King James Bible. The only proper authorities I am aware of are my commanding officer, Colonel Nathan R. Jessup, and the Lord our God. <laughs> Lieutenant, do you know what a code red is? Yes, I do. Have you ever ordered a code red? No, I have not. <laughs> sure, it was lovely for Private Bell. But you did order the barracks restriction, didn't you? You did order the denial of food. There we have it. Yes, I did. Yep, yeah, there we have it. Lance Corporal Dawson was given a below average rating because he had committed a crime. What crime did he commit? Lieutenant Kendrick? Dawson brought a hungry guy some food. Yeah, how's that a crime? He disobeyed an order. Lance Corporal Dawson disobeyed an order. Why are you yelling at him? Can Dawson determine on his own which orders he's going to follow? No, he cannot. A lesson he learned after the Curtis Bell incident, am I right? I would think so. You know so, don't you, Lieutenant? Object! Oh. If you had ordered Dawson to give Santiago a code red... I specifically ordered those men... Is it reasonable not to, to think Santiago. he would have disobeyed you again? Lieutenant, don't answer that. Lance Corporal Dawson and Private Downey to give Willie Santiago a code red. Say hey, yes. You're under... You're under oath. Isn't that illegal? And if they find out that he's lying, don't he get something out of it? Like a consequence? There's gotta be someone who can testify to the flight. A ground crew member, someone. At this point, it doesn't feel like we're getting anywhere. And why did you give him a code red? I was ordered to give him a code red by the platoon commander of Rifle Security Company, Windward, Lieutenant Jonathan James Kendrick. You're gonna do fine. Oh, she's so proud of him. For my part, I've done as much as I can to bring the truth to light. And the truth is this, your son is dead for only one reason. I wasn't strong enough to stop it. Matthew Andrew Markinson. Taking his own life. And if it's about 10 or 15 minutes by Jeep, I'm guessing it must be a good hour by foot, am I right? Pick up and me did it in 45 flat, sir. <laughs> did you ever actually hear Lieutenant Kendrick order a code red? 
Did you ever actually hear Lieutenant Kendrick order a code red? No, sir. Please, the court, I'd like to request a recess. Don't look at him! How? Private, answer the captain's question! Yes, Captain. I was given an order by my squad leader, Lance Corporal Harold W. Dawson, United States Marine Corps, and I followed it. Oh, we lost the case. We lost the case. Oh. After all this time. Oh, and the guy that shot himself. Oh, the mess. Hopefully this is just going to be co a chaos. Downey wasn't in his room. Wasn't even there. That was an important piece of information, don't you think? Yeah, that's something we should have known. Danny, it was a setback, and I'm sorry. But we fix it and move on to Markinson. Markinson is dead. Markinson's dead. Yeah. He fired a bullet into his mouth. Anyway, since we seem to be out of witnesses, I thought I'd drink a little. I still think we can win. I don't think so. Oh, we get it from him! No problem! We get it from him! Colonel Jessup, isn't it true that you ordered the code red on Santiago? Eh, I'm sorry, your time's run out! What do we have for the losers, Judge? Now he's lost it. He's lost it. Thank you for playing! Should we, or should we not follow the advice of the galactically stupid? <laughs> Oh, well. Neither Lionel Caffey nor Sam Weinberg are lead counsel for the defense in the matter of U.S. versus Dawson and Down. So there's really only one question. What would you do? Yeah, what would you do? Joanne! Joanne! Go get in the car. Joanne! Wasn't he drunk? In the hands of a lesser attorney, that'd be a problem. Oh, look at this. Last night he's swimming in Jack Daniels. I'm getting my second win. Sit down, both of you. Good. <laughs> Stay here, I'm going to the office for a while. He does think better with that bath. <laughs> the thing is, right now, Danny really wants to prove himself, and I understand that. He's like, okay, now I'm alone here. I wonder how many days this case is going to last. Colonel, at the time of this meeting, you gave Lieutenant Kendrick an order, is that right? I ordered Markinson to have Santiago transferred off the base immediately. Why? I felt his life might be in danger. But everyone is lying under oath. I am... <sighs> Santiago's barracks room was sealed off and its contents inventory. Four pairs of green socks, three OD green t-shirts, Please, the court, is there a question anywhere in our future? Give him some time. For Santiago was so excited that do you know how many people he called? Zero. Nobody. Santiago was leaving for the rest of his life and he hadn't called a soul. Oh, you got this. Danny has this. I didn't dismiss you. I'd appreciate if he would dress me as Colonel or Sir. I believe I've earned it. And the witness will address this court as Judge or Your Honor. I'm quite certain I've earned it. Yeah, you don't like seeing that happen to you, huh? <sighs> Ever put your life in another man's hand? Asked him to put his life in yours? We follow orders, son. We follow orders or people die. Or people follow orders and people die. Are we clear? Crystal. Why is he so mad? No, sir. You made it clear just a moment ago that your men never take matters in their own hands. Your men follow orders or people die. So Santiago shouldn't have been in any danger at all, should he have, Colonel? You snotty little bastard. I'd like an answer to the question, Judge. I can't be awake for an answer. What's the question? That Santiago's death, while tragic, probably saved lives. And my existence, while grotesque and incomprehensible to you, saves lives. You want me on that wall. You need me on But you're not answering. I have neither the time nor the inclination to explain myself to a man who rises and sleeps under the blanket of the very freedom. No, but dude, you're at the courtroom. You actually have to answer. And went on your way. Otherwise, I suggest you pick up a weapon and stand up. But he's a lawyer. But damn, what you think you are entitled to. But here he's a lawyer. Answer, he's entitled to that. All right. You're goddamn right I did. 
There we have it. I'm gonna rip the eyes out of your head and piss in your dead skull! You put the wrong Marine! You have no idea how to defend a nation. All you did was weaken a country today, Kathy. I'm a lawyer and an officer in the United States Navy. And you're under arrest, you son of a bitch. <laughs> oh. This is excused. You did that. He did that. Oh my god. This entire scene here. Chef's kiss. Oh. On the charge of conspiracy to commit murder, the members find the accused not guilty. On the charge of conduct unbecoming a United States Marine, guilty as charged. What? Oh, we were so close. He was supposed to fight for people who couldn't fight for themselves. He was supposed to fight for Willie. Lieutenant Caffey, I have to take these men over to personnel for some paperwork. We were so close. It's just making me emotional. Strong witnesses. And handsome to it, didn't you think? <laughs> <laughs> What? No way. Okay, guys. We just finished watching A Few Good Men. And with this movie, I think it's safe to say that there was a few good men. I honestly had such a good time watching this. It was such a wild ride. And I didn't expect the outcome to be like that. And seeing how... The character development of Danny going from like only talking about softball and not seeming like he cares about anything or anyone and uh, only caring about like the friendly banter with his boys to becoming this lawyer that is so, so inspired, motivated. He is hardworking and he's not even doing it only for himself. He's trying to prove to people that his dad was one of the best and therefore he could be one of the best as well. And when Sam was saying, like, if I could choose between you or your dad, I'd choose you any day of the week. And on Sundays twice. You know, I just love that. Demi Moore, she did amazing in her role. I love seeing Jack Nicholson in something else that is in a horror movie where he isn't, like... I was going to say when he isn't crazy, but right here he was crazy mad. He was... I don't know what to think about his role because I understand that he's trying to protect his country and he looked at Santiago as a weakness to his platoon but all in all that's not how it works so of course i understand that he's getting put into jail and being arrested and all of that totally understand it but i loved his role as well it was so interesting to watch this movie it is not anything i've seen before this is quite different than what i expected it to be all in all i really enjoyed it thank you so much guys that are on my patreon for being part of my Patreon poll and letting this one win. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for voting for this one. If you want to watch my full reaction, it is over on Patreon. On my social media, they're linked down below. So thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video very, very soon. Bye everyone. Put your head on my